Get in the know. Non-stop Vikings talk. It's Purple Daily on Score North and scorenorth.com. Purple Daily, presented by Surly Brewing Company. Well, there's Purple Daily, there's Before I Die, there's Vent Line, and then, of course, there's Purple Access, which is what this is. Judd Declan, Starch Bune, a sports columnist Chip Scoggins, who was in Green Bay to witness the destruction of the Vikings on Sunday. Uh, and let's just start there, Chip, since you saw it. What was, I, I guess my biggest question is this, what was your takeaway from the post-game stuff? Like, would be, because this is now the second time that they have absolutely been throttled by an opponent. What did you, <clears throat> what did you observe from a team that had just uh, allowed 41 points? Yeah, I was trying to think about what the vibe was in there. Um, I think definitely frustration with how they played and the fact that they've had a couple of these now where they're yep. just not competitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I I think that's the sense. I mean, Cousins was very short in his answers. Uh, you could tell he was frustrated. Uh, a number of the guys in the, in the locker room, I, I think, felt that same way. Not panic or anything like that, but um, I, I think very frustrated with themselves that when things start to snowball on them, they can't stop it. And that, that game... Might have lost Chip there. I think we lost Chip there briefly. Do we, lose, do we lose Chip? All right, let's see if we can get Chip back because he was about to tell us what the uh, at, what the mood was like from a Vikings team that got blown out and now plays the Bears again on Sunday. Yeah, but to his uh, to his point there, you know, they, they I watched back the Kirk Cousins clip and it just seemed he was pretty upset. Uh, Kevin O'Connell, who has this kind of like demeanor of, you know, what what I thought was a good week of preparation, then all of a sudden you know, we get blown out and how do I, how can I be better for that for the week of preparation and stuff too? It just, a lot of those answers I, I saw at the podium as well just seemed very, very telling. Yeah, I don't think, the problem is, I think if you're a good team, you get one of these per year where, where yes, you're going to lose some games, but you get one, you get might get, you know, the Dallas game is disappointing and you get absolutely drubbed by 37 points. Uh, I certainly don't think there was any expectation in that locker room especially against that team that they would come out and be that bad and i think that's a big i this is a bad time because it's not a wake-up call at this point this is a bad time i think to get the to get a game like this because now it's just concerning um and also we'll talk to chip about this but you've also got the problems now with with who's going to play on sunday are you going to play guys on sunday do you want their last memory potentially to be that that last game against the Packers we we have Chip Scoggins back Chip pick up where, pick up where you left off and our connection crapped out do you, do you think it has anything to do with the foot of snow that's just falling in my house <laughs> I just shot uh, um yeah uh yeah as I say when it just felt off when they, you, you get down to the one yard line on block punt and you have to kick a field goal it just it felt you know like you can't do that you can't play that way and then the I think it was Naylor on the kickoff return. I have no idea what he was doing, jumping like three lanes out of his out of his lane um, to allow that kickoff return. So, um, yeah, I think it's that's the thing is that's just been this team obviously is resilient. They have something about them in close games that they don't panic and they can win close games. But when it goes south, it goes really south on them and. Yep. Um, I don't know what it is that this team, because this is what three or three of them now, just outright duds. Yep, they they yep. just don't have garden variety losses, Judd. I mean, no, they, no. Have, they don't. They have, they have they have the kind of loss that makes you question their credibility, and you think the sky is falling. That's the kind of losses they've had. It's not mm-hmm. just you know, they don't just lose like. 27 21 27 24 i mean it's just non-competitive and so i think that's the alarming thing for people i I think the thing about the week two loss uh in philly in my opinion was this they got dominated but the score like there was there was a path to come back they didn't take it the problem with the dallas loss and the packers loss is there was no path they they got absolutely embarrassed and as, as i told dex I think you get. I think good teams get one of those per year. Okay, we yeah. got drilled. It's embarrassing. Um, and the other thing is, I don't see the purpose that this one served. 
Like it's too late for a wake up call. They don't need a way. So ah. I, I just, I, this would concern me because of the timing, the opponents and what it sets up now. Well, the thing that concerns me would concern me the most is uh, their offensive line's a disaster right now. Oh, yeah, we'll get into that. Yes, I oh, mean to me that was that was besides being non-competitive and you know not not taking advantage of all the good things that were happening around you that you know you had a chance. You know, the number one seed was uh, still out there, and to play that way, you know that that you know. That's probably the number one takeaway. But the, the second one is, holy cow, Judd, this is the offensive line. I I just don't know how this is going to work. <laughs> well, you know what it is? It's it, it's a wor- it's a worse case than 2017, where the same damn thing took place. Place Nick Easton, who was not O'Neal yeah. or Bradbury, he was certainly not Brian, but he was a nice player and he was an important right guard. He gets hurt. He cracks his ankle in week at the time, 15 penultimate Mm -hmm. game though in green Bay. He's lost. They, I don't know if they panicked or what they did, but they move Remmers who was playing pretty decent at right tackle to left guard where he was atrocious. Rashad Hill comes in and that's, and that was a big loss. This is worse. And I, from the way O'Connell's talking chipper, I'm not so sure Bradbury's coming back. Well, I asked him after the game, you know, I said, what's your level of concern here? And he, you know, with this line, he's like, when a coach says we hope to get him back at some point, that's not very definitive. There's you're guaranteed two games left. Well, um, or training camp. <laughs> that's, that's right. He might be back for training camp if they resign him. <laughs> that's right. He's like, hey, at some point, it's like, well, Judd, he hasn't practiced in two weeks. He yep. had that car wreck on the way home from the Colts game. Yep. And that was over two weeks ago. He has not practiced. So, and the other thing is, you know, it's a back, right? We think it's a back injury. Um, no, it is a back injury. That's been yeah, confirmed and, by them. And, and but like when the car accident re-aggravated it, exacerbated it, did something more to it. Um, so if he hasn't even practiced yet, how do you know he's going to be able to handle collisions? Oh, you don't. And can he, and if he does come back for a playoff game one, can he stay in the game? Like he's a center with a back problem. Think about that. Yeah, and it's so not that, a knee. You don't brace up a back. Exactly, and so now you're you're relying on a guy who's never played center to play center. And it was, and I, I'm guessing with practice, it's going to look a little better than it did Sunday. But John, he was forgetting to snap the ball. I mean, he caused two false starts because he forgot to. And and I, I don't really fault Chris Reed. He's never played a position. I mean, he's he's playing out of position. So, I mean, yeah. And now you're. Judd, look at the right side of your line. Ingram, oh, did, who's, who's had a real, had a, <laughs> who's had a real I wrote t- about it for my friends at VikingsWire.com. <laughs> if you'd like to read my I thoughts, there. yeah. Um, and then only Udo, who's a better tackle than guard, but right, he was he, you know, he's number four. Um, he was behind Brandle too. So I, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I, I see they're signing, you know, guys off the street, but. It, at this point, is that how much is that going to help you? So here's a a weird one. We all, I think, on the, this show, and I think you as well, Chipper, have like wondered what O'Connell's doing on fourth and short by always like trying to throw, right? Yeah. Never, never in my wildest dreams, <laughs> never in my wildest dreams, as I criticized that, did I think, you know what? Eventually, he's going to get a key player hurt, but he did. Brian O'Neill hurt his calf yeah. or Achilles. We don't know really. But Brian O'Neill was hurt trying to uh, chase Savage on the on the pick six. Um, yeah. You talk about a costly fourth down play. Yeah. Oh, my God. Because that look, as far as I'm concerned, Brian O'Neill is the heartbeat of that line. Well, he is. I mean, if, and if you're around them and you're in the locker room, there's no denying he's the leader of that group. No denying. I mean, he's the one that uh, they all look up to. He's been the rock. I mean, he hasn't, Judd, he hasn't missed a game because of injury in his career. So this is going to be the first one he misses because of injury. Now he sat for uh, not injury uh, related, but he's, you know, he's been just a rocket at, at there. So, I mean, yeah, that is a m- massive loss. Like that play call was weird. And the fact that, you know, on third and goal, after you bring Chris Reed in, who's never played center, you run up 
behind the center. On the, that, that was I, weird. Like, really? You're going to run behind a center who's never played center uh, the first play on third and goal from the one? Um, so that old game, Judd, felt like an indictment um, of preparation. Guys didn't wear the right cleats after being told you need to change your cleats. I know I know they probably hate to wear those. I know it's probably a comfort thing. I know they probably are not as fast when they have to wear those long cleats, but they didn't heed the advice that they received. And and, and the thing is, it's like they've had a lot of – they've had guys that played for the Packers. Adam Thielen has played over there many, many times. They have guys that played there many, many times that probably should have told these guys, hey, you got to wear these certain type cleats because it's going to be slick. Yeah. Um, Defense, 10 guys on the field. They give up an 11-yard oh. pass on third down. Then they have 12 guys on the field. Uh, it just – it didn't seem like a very disciplined team to me the other night. What did you make – so it's, it is – it's not like a huge story in and of itself, Chip, but what did you make of the cleats thing? Because to me, that's where you run into – because O'Connell's like, well, we can't tell them what to – you know, we, we can suggest, but we're not going to make them yeah. wear – what was your takeaway from that? That was one of the first things I've seen where I'm like, okay, players coach, awesome. You've done a great job. Uh, but there's comes a certain time where you have to put your foot down and say, this is what we are as a team doing. Uh, yeah. Your comfort, your comfort is not, is not more important than our success. Yeah. Well, the first thing we were talking about is like, don't make too big a deal of this to where it comes off as an excuse for how they play, because it wasn't that, they right. didn't lose 41. Uh, no, and it's not a schism. It. Like, it's not a schism either. Oh, no, I'm just no. curious what you think. I, just, um, I don't know that as a coach you can tell this is what you're wearing. Because, it is, you know, it is a comfort thing. It's like anything. Like, try it out, you know. You know, if you're not sliding, great. But pro- you probably are. And, and, and I forgot who the player was, but uh, I saw it in the quote sheet. Some player said, you know, during warm-ups it wasn't bad because the sun was still out and it was – not as slick, but then once the game started and it got a little bit later and the sun, it got dark, that's when it became really slippery. Um, I don't think as a coach you can force players to wear that. Uh, you just wonder if, if guys didn't take it seriously enough to how slick it was going to be um, until they were sliding all over the place. And, you know, it was only an issue there in the first quarter, right, where we saw – yeah, because the yeah. game was over quickly. Yeah, Jefferson, I think twice, TJ Hawkinson a couple times. Um, so it ju- it just seemed like, you know, for those guys that are having to plant cut, you know, come in and out of breaks, I think they maybe should have taken it, I don't know, more seriously or just uh, realized that it was going to be a bad surface. All right, let's get to the defense. Um, one, I think I've seen in- enough of Ed D- Donatel's defense. Yeah. Uh, two, you know, back to your point about coaching and preparation and things like that. And this isn't, I don't know if this is preparation, but it's certainly coaching. Um, when you have that 10 men on the field was egregious. First of all, Rogers was like staring at it, like trying to like, yeah. It, yeah. And, and so there's a ton of time Kendricks, Shelley, and I think at least one or two other defensive players are yelling at the sideline. Yeah. It's third and 10. It's third and 10. Yeah. So like, and nothing is done. And sure enough, they get the, the first down. And then on that same drive, they come back with 12 men. Um, I don't know, Chipper. I just, yeah, I, I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of what I'm seeing from, from many angles of how this, this defense is attempting to play. seems like there's quick fixes. Okay. Yeah. Really, but it doesn't seem like there's a long-term plan here to fix things. No, and they scored on that drive. I think it made it thirty-four to three, right? If I it, it spilled into the fourth quarter on that drive, but um, so, but it's Judd. You have thirty-five, you know, bleeping coaches. Somebody called timeout. Somebody had to recognize you didn't have enough guys on there. Call timeout. Well, players are like, yelling at at the coaches. Yeah, yeah, and there's you mean of all the coaches they had down on the field and up in the. Press box, nobody realized they didn't have enough guys on the field. It was just a bad look, it, it, and I agree. Um, I it, it won't surprise me if, if there's a change after the season, you know. I mean, I think people were hollering for that three weeks ago. You're not going to make it do that during the season when you're 
however what the record was at the time. Um, but I, I think once he sits down and O'Connell looks at like how things went, where it's going, um, I think that side of the ball is going to turn over personnel a lot. Yes, I agree. Uh, it, it might just seem like the perfect time to do it. Um, but, you know, the worst, you know, they scored 41 points and Rodgers passed for 159 yards. <laughs> it wasn't like that. But, you know, they couldn't – Aaron Jones, I thought, had a really nice game. He's he's good, man. Um, he's a yeah, good running back. What's funny is he – as I recall, he didn't slip much. <laughs> I think he probably had the right cleats. His cleats were good. Uh, His cleats were great. Seven studs. Yeah. Speaking of running game, Judd, like – what are they 28, 29th in rushing? And Dalvin's yeah. just become um that's a, he's another player where that's a lot of money you're paying a guy who you're not really using. And his drop was awful. I yeah. think that was the first yeah. half drop over the, and, yeah. and little slant route. I mean, that sucker was gonna pick up 15 yards. Um, you know what's funny is this team, it's been fun. It's been a fun team, like it's a crazy team, but it's a fun team. Um, they played a lot of entertaining football games. But you have to hope that the people that run this team see the undercurrent of flaws. Because if they don't, this is the type of team that could come back next year and win five games. Like, you got to be well, careful here. The thing is, Judd, is like, when has a 12 win team have a point differential of negative 19? And it, mean, was, it tells, was worse before the garbage yeah, time. It's never and happened. It, before the time, yeah. I mean, that tells you how much of an anomaly this is. Yep. One, to go 11 and 0 in one score games. That's great. It shows that they're resilient and they do it, but it's also that's not sustainable in in modern NFL. You you're not going to have that kind of record in one score games. Maybe it's not a flip of the coin. Maybe you should win more than you lose, but you're not just going to have 11 and 0 in one score games. And and so the fact that they're, you know, have a this kind of point differential with 12 wins tells you this is an outlier. This is not this is not the model. This is not how you uh, you're going to plan it. So, and the other thing is, Judd, Justin Jefferson is going to need a big contract, like this oh, last yeah. season. Yeah, and he's going to get paid like a quarterback. So, if he's in twenty five to thirty million dollar range, and Cousins is thirty million, math doesn't work. Something, something people are going to have to go. I mean, you, you can't. I mean, the money's not going to work. So the, the good news on because I, I asked around about this, the good news on the Jefferson contract is that the it wouldn't kick in until the, his rookie contract's done. Yeah. So they so they wouldn't take the cap hit like like the extension would be signed, but they wouldn't start to take that cap the hit net. until Cousins is gone. Like that's the yeah. whole thing is you're going to have to be very careful here about your transitionary period and how you do it. Um, yeah. It, it's going to be very sensitive if you don't want to get really bad. Well, and it's fun. yeah. Well, that's it because it's it's like, you know, Dalvin has a big salary, but you're not really running the ball. You know, even you know, you're well, you're yeah, come on, bring it you're, on. You're keep not, talking about keep. You're not trying. Adam Thielen has a nah, big contract, thank you. and and he's he's basically become number four, right? Your fourth option. I would yes. Hawkinson's too, and, and Osborne. If you're just looking at targets and and uh, role in the offense, um, Eric Kendricks. What are you going to do with Harrison Smith? What are you going to do with was there was the Darius Smith? What are you going to do with Daniel Hunter? I mean, these are big contract guys. Yeah, they're going to, in my opinion, one one of the things from Quazy's first year they're going to regret very soon here if they don't right now, not staying pat in the first round and taking Jamison Williams with that pick, yeah. uh, because they have to get Jefferson a number two. Yeah, Hawkinson well, can't be that guy. Like, like he's very. I like him. Didn't have a great game on Sunday, but yeah, I like what he brings. But like the way that you just described the depth chart now, that can't be it. You've got to have Jefferson, a true to Osborne, I don't know, Naylor maybe. But anyway, the point is they don't have the guy that's going to be their second receiver on this team now. And and if they had taken Jamison, bitten the bullet, and, and allowed him to, uh, what, get healthy into December, yeah, I think yeah. that would give you a true two. And that's the type of guy. And, you know, jury's out. But I, I had heard before he got hurt that it wasn't as if Seen was tearing it up. He yeah. Didn't well, start. It, it, yeah, you need a, a true number two receiver and Hawkinson. And yep. um, because we saw, I don't know, 
I don't know if there's ever going to be a template or a book because on Jefferson because he's so good and he's still. But John, I, I did. Did they did they show this on TV? The second play of the game, J- Jair Alexander shoves him so hard it was like two guys getting ready to fight off the line. Um, they didn't. And they didn't, yeah. it, I mean, it was like you know they were shoving each other. It was like play had stopped. I think it was running play to Dalvin, and it was like okay, this, they're gonna try to beat him up, right? They're going to be very physical yeah. and they're going to put a safety over top. It's like, you know, I don't know that me, not everybody has the corners that can do that, but um, I got to imagine maybe teams draft or look for that are playing the, you know, the Vikings that like, Hey, we got to be physical with him. We got to press him, jam him, get safety help. I think he's still going to put up, you know, crazy numbers because he's that good, but, um, he's going to take – teams are going to be physical with him, and so they they need somebody to help him out on the other side. They need another two – a number two that's really going to be productive to try to ease some of that um, focus that he's getting. I talked about that last week. So there, there was a play that struck me, and it probably struck the Packers too, against the Giants, where they tried to play press coverage on Jefferson – and the guy <clears throat> failed to press him. So he's supposed to yeah. press him. He failed because Jefferson makes a move, one, two step. And his footwork is so good. Like, like that's the thing is he's an incredibly talented and smart player. His footwork is so good that he loses the guy immediately. And the play is done as far as the Giants are concerned because they're go- going to get screwed. Um, and I said this last week and the Packers did it. You have to basically punch him off the line of scrimmage. You have to grab grab him or or punch him because if you don't he's going to get by you but Mm -hmm. if you do and what we saw on sunday and and i this goes back to when thielen was in his prime i told collar this in 17 i said i would level him off the line every time because i know he's going to get mad and frustrated and his demeanor is to start to whine about it which which jefferson sort of did too and that's the thing so i think what the packers did i don't even know now jair's a damn good player but I, I think what you just said um, makes a lot of sense, which is just the starting point is make sure that you jam him and jam him hard. And and the greatest thing about the sport is you can take away a guy's will to play. Yeah, I think uh, that's as frustrating as seeing Jefferson. I think probably, you know, all the pregame talk about uh, from Jair about whatever the word he used it was. Um, fluke. Fluke, week one. I think that the footing – uh, frustrated Jefferson that he couldn't do the things he's accustomed to. It was sliding. Um, I think the, you know, the grabbing, the one where he did the gritty after he, yeah. you know, whether it's pass interference, break up, whatever you want, you know, the guy's taunting him there. I just think it was, and then the way the game went, you know, that it just, um, it was, it's as frustrated as I see him. So I don't know. That's like, again, I don't know that every team has, the capability of doing what Alexander did. But how many times do we see like teams just let have him have a free run off the line? It's like, that's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to be, he's going he's to absolutely destroy you. If you let him just run off the line free. That's what I don't get is. Um, so, and I've heard this before. It makes no sense. They, certain people say, well, you can't press. Cause if he beats you, you're screwed. Well, if he beats you, well that's it. That's okay. the theory. Then make sure he doesn't beat like, like you can, the worst case is if you spin him or grab him, you're going to get a yeah, play. If, yeah. But I mean, that's the thing is you can't, you, if you don't press him, like, are you really going to play off coverage against this guy? He's going to kill you. Well, that's the thing is like, it, it, it just boggles my mind that teams. And I understand like, if you press a miss, now you're giving up a big play and, and um, you know, that's a sure wire, surefire way to get burned is, you know, give the big plays here, just try to keep him in front of you. I, I understand that philosophy, but he can just dominate you that way too. So, exactly. um, but, you know, it was, uh, it was interesting the way they defended him, where they covered him. And I'll be curious to see like how that, if that's a, a blueprint for teams going forward. Yeah. And who becomes the big play guy if they, they do. The problem is that in the old well, days, Thielen would have had a huge game on Sunday. Well, Cousins wanted it to be Hawkinson. I mean, yeah. he was force feeding him the ball there, and he had three drops. It was just a poor game for Hawkinson, but um, it's clear he's become his his uh, security blanket in the way that Thielen was before this year. Um, I think you need, uh, you know, a receiver 
as well to be in that in that mold. So from, from the press box, what could you see there? Like was the because Thielen had to be an advantage ad, um, advantageous situations. My guess is he's not fast enough to get away from the guy. I mean, like what did you I see, see him getting open? Box? Yeah, Judd, I just don't see the separation. I, I really just don't see him getting open like we used to. Um, and part of it is. I don't. I would. I don't know where in in, in uh, Cousins progression he is. Because it's clear Jefferson, then Hawkinson, or vice versa. You know, sometimes he's looking for Hawkins. He's, and then maybe Osborne. So I, there's probably times where Thielen is open, but it's just uh, Cousins is is you know kind of moved on to the the other three guys right now, and it's like, you know, how many? There's only so many passes you're gonna you know uh, target you're gonna get. So I. Um, I think it's a combination. Of, I'll be curious at you know at the end of the season we always hear this guy had this surgery, this guy's had this, this guy had this injury. I mean he's obviously dealing with something. Um, I just wonder if it's could be time. It, it could be. He's dealing well, with father time. You can't remove that one. Well, that too. I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, obviously you, you get over. Your, but I think he is dealing with something too. Hmm. I'm sure. I just don't know. That contract is is well. That's it's a not huge that's, problem. Yeah, that's going to have to get reworked. Last thing, what would you do as far as playing time and starters go Sunday in Chicago in a game where, I mean, I, they're going to be the three seed. Yeah. But, you but know, you they theoretically could get the two. Yeah, I mean, it's that's the thing that's hard because um, we thought that uh, NFL might move those games and play them simultaneous, play the the, the Vikings at 332. So uh, there is no advantage because, you know, 49ers might say, hey, we got the two locked up. Let's just rest everybody. Um, yeah. I, as long as as long as the two seed is still a realm of the possibility, as slight as it is, you know, you, I don't think 49ers are going to lose to Arizona. But, um, but as long as it's still a possibility, I think you have to play, guys. And the other thing is, Judd, they played so poorly the other night. I don't know that that's how I want them going into the playoffs. That's what I was saying. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? I mean, oh yeah, that's a great point. And, and you know, if somebody got hurt, I would probably regret saying that. You know, right. but I just feel like they need to find a rhythm and establish a little more confidence and feeling good about where they're at going into the playoffs. Versus, okay, we had this horrible game. Now everybody sit and then let's go get them in the first. I, I it, and it sounds like that's sort of how O'Connell's leaning. He said there might be selective guys sitting versus like, just all the starters sit. Right. Um, Thielen, maybe Dalvin. Jefferson, maybe Jefferson. I mean, the, you, the offensive line ha- has to play because well, they they're have all, they're they're basically new. <laughs> they don't, and they don't have anybody else. Um, no, they absolutely have to play. And uh, so I, I, you know, at least for a half or three, whatever, just to, I mean, I think they need to establish something and, and feel good about how they're playing going into the, to the playoffs. Great stuff, Chipper. I will uh, talk to you next week, man. Take care. Hey, brother.